Free Presbyterian Church, we present Let the Bible Speak. It's good to have you with us today as we spend 15 minutes around the Word of God, preaching Christ in all His fullness. And this is Leslie Curran saying hello and welcome to the program. I'm delighted you're tuning in once again as the Reverend John Greer, minister of Ballymena Free Presbyterian Church, is back with us to Let the Bible Speak. Welcome once more to Let the Bible Speak. We are delighted to be on the airwaves again to bring God's Word. And we trust the Lord will bless you today as you hear His truth. Could I invite you to come to our church services held every Lord's Day at 11.30 and 6.30 And everyone who is uh, tuning in today will be very welcome at any time if you wish to come along. And then could I mention again our Youth Challenge Week, which begins on Sunday night, the 10th of February, runs through to Friday the 15th. And the preacher had these meetings to our young people will be the Reverend Thomas Laverty, who went out from our congregation some years ago and currently ministers in Liverpool in England. We look forward to his ministry, look forward to these meetings, and we want all young people to come and hear the Word of God. Our text today is Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, and the verse number 48. Christ speaks and he says this, He is like a man which built a house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. It is a joy to have you listening once again, and we pray that as we turn to this verse, now in a moment or two, the Lord will bless it very richly to your heart, to your soul. We are thankful that you're listening in again to Let the Bible Speak, the weekly radio program of Balamina Free Presbyterian Church. And we encourage you to listen every week at this same time, and we pray that you will be blessed and helped as you hear the word of the Lord. And as a minister of the congregation, it's my joy to be on the airwaves again and bring to you the Lord's precious truth. We pray that you will visit our churches, uh, our church one of these Sundays. You'll be very welcome, 11.30 in the morning and 6.30 in the evening. Those are the times of our church's services, and we look forward to your attendance. And we encourage you to come along and hear the word of the Lord. Here in Luke's Gospel, chapter 6 and verse 48, Christ refers to the man who obeys the gospel, and he says this, He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. In these words, the Lord sets before disobedient sinners a graphic picture of the need and the responsibility to give obedience to the gospel. Furthermore, his way of stressing that need and responsibility is by focusing on a certain feature in the illustration that he employs, namely the foundation of the house that a certain man built. As we read this text carefully, we will see that the focus in its entirety is essentially on the foundation, a point that is further stressed in the contrary picture in verse 49 of a man who built without a foundation. So the heart of the Lord's teaching is that the sinner who hears and obeys the gospel is laying a spiritual foundation on which the soul may rest forever. We will consider that line of thought in the following way. There is the identity of the foundation. As I've noted with you, the Lord focuses on the foundation of the house that the man built. It is both interesting and of the greatest importance to notice the identity of the foundation that he used. Notice the words. He is like a man which built a house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. Now the language here is very graphic. It portrays the builder as one who digs deep. In the original text, the words literally read, who dug and deepened. And therefore the man kept digging deeper and deeper as he sought to find the foundation so that the imagery is of a man who is in search for something that he is not going to find on the surface, on the shallow level. He's looking for a shelf of solid rock on which he wants to place the foundation of his house. And therefore in nature or essence, the foundation was the rock itself. 
not the material that the builder placed upon the rock. And that's very important to notice. Now, in this manner, the Lord presents the truth that those who truly hear and obey the gospel uh, will find uh, that they're not going to be satisfied with anything less than finding the true foundation that the soul needs for its eternal well-being. The identity of this true foundation is shown in this text in a very interesting way, because in the original text it reads this way, and laid the foundation on the rock. Read uh, that way and you will see that the emphasis is clearly pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ. He laid the foundation on the rock. There is a certain rock that alone will provide for the sinner the basis upon which he rests his soul and its salvation. The words the rock have only one interpretation. The rock is Jesus Christ himself. That actual word, rock, is used of the Lord in various scriptures. In Matthew 16, verse 18, where the Lord uh, says to Peter that the church is built upon this rock, namely he himself, our Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter verifies this because in his own epistle, 1 Peter, he refers to the rock in 1 Peter 2, verse 6, and quotes from Isaiah 28, 16, which is an Old Testament revelation of Christ as the foundation of the church, uh, the rock upon which the sinner will find that blessed standing for his soul. Now, that concept of the Lord being the rock for sinners is dominant in Scripture. For example, in the book of Psalms, Upwards of 20 times the psalmist refers to the Lord as my rock. And the same concept is found in many other scriptures. And therefore, when the Lord speaks here about this man digging deep and laying his foundation upon the rock, he is simply saying what is found throughout the word of God in many, many other places. Christ is the rock because he is qualified to save sinners. He's qualified to be the foundation of the soul. In 1 Corinthians 3, 10 and 11, the Apostle Paul uh, says that he, as a wise master builder, had laid a certain foundation which he identifies as Christ and Christ only, because Christ alone was qualified to save sinners, is the point that Paul is making. His qualification to be the Savior, to be the rock, is because of his perfect obedience for sinners, because of the work that he has done for sinners, that finished work, that blessed work where he died and he suffered and he shed his blood to put away sin. So Christ is the rock where the sinner is able to hide. He is also the rock already established. The man in our text did not lay the rock. It was already there, a fact spelled out in the words that the wise man dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. The rock was already there. The spiritual lesson is that the foundation that you need is already established. You must get to Christ, the rock, the foundation that God the Father has put in place. Pray the prayer of the psalmist, Psalm 61 verse 2, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Sinner, do not rest until you are on the one who is the rock of ages. And then there's the necessity of the foundation, because it goes on to speak in our text, Luke 6 and verse 48, in this way, when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house. Now these words are vitally important because they reveal why a foundation for the soul is needed so desperately is necessary because a time of testing is coming. Notice the words, when the flood arose. The picture that the Lord portrays includes the issue of the testing of the house by natural elements. And in this manner, the Lord reveals that what men are spiritually and morally is going to be put to the test. Now, the test is inevitable. It says, when, not if, the flood arose. There is no doubt about the certainty of the test and the scrutiny of the spiritual condition of men. Man is essentially a moral and a spiritual being. He was made in the image of God. He has a soul. He's accountable 
to the Lord for all that he is and all that he has done, and therefore it's inevitable that he will be tested, he will be judged, he will be tried. The test is not only inevitable, it is irresistible. The terms here make this very clear. The words beat vehemently mean to burst upon, and therefore there's an accumulation of raging water rising higher and higher, then bursting its banks and engulfing the house. And the terms clearly portray the imagery of a test, a judgment that cannot be evaded or resisted. Now this testing of one's spiritual state is implemented in various ways. For examples, uh, for example, life's trials of different kinds. There are losses, there is ill health, there are disappointments, there are bereavements, and they can all be very revealing because in many cases they result in bitterness and anger and wrath and clamor and resentment against the Lord. They serve to expose the one who is but a mere hypocrite or a false professor the fair-weather Christian, so-called, who is really a stony ground here, who doesn't have the root of the matter in him, and when the trial comes, he withers away, he turns against God, he forsakes his profession of Christianity, and therefore we can see how in this, uh, in this text that situation is clearly set before uh, the, uh, our minds. And therefore, we're reminded of the testing that comes in life. But then there's a, a future testing. There is judgment to come when all men will give an account. And oh, the solemnity of that great day. If you're overwhelmed with the issues of life now in this present existence, if you can't stand the tests of time and you turn against God and you bitterly uh, curse him even or, 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 or uh, plunge deeper into sin, how are you going to stand the test of the great judgment day? How are you going to stand before God and deal with the test then? Oh, I tell you, friend, there is therefore the necessity of this foundation clearly brought before us. These references to the testing day tell us that we must obey the gospel. We must yield to the Lord and come to Christ and be found steadfastly fastened to the rock that is uh, firm and unmoving and impregnable and will keep us in the day of testing and judgment. There's the security then of the foundation because in the closing part of the verse, the detail that the stream beating on the house uh, could not shake it for it was founded upon the rock is very important. The stability of the house lay in its union with the rock. The rock was secure and impregnable, therefore the house was too. The security of the foundation, the rock, was transferred to the house. What a reminder of the security that the Lord affords to all who trust him as Saviour. What a contrast with the man whose house had no foundation. Verse 49, He that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth. Oh, upon the earth. Oh, where are you building life? Where are you standing today? Is it on the rock, Christ Jesus? If so, then you're secure. Is it on the earth, on your own earthly ways and opinions, or earthly religion? Oh, friend, get to Christ, because you're in great danger, and may you trust him as your Savior and your Redeemer. You've been listening to Let the Bible Speak. If we can be of any further spiritual help, we invite you to contact us via our website at www.balaminafpc.org, on our Facebook at facebook.com forward slash FPC, or via our phone number 2565-2895. You may hear Mr. Greer preach each Lord's Day here in Balamina Free Presbyterian Church at 11.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. We assure you of a warm welcome at all of the services and look forward to having you with us. Thank you for listening today. May the Lord richly bless you. And don't forget to tune in next week at the same time as once again we turn to the Scriptures and let the Bible speak. Music